Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Coat Slice. I know that it's been very, very long since I had a tutorial. Um, yes, but I promise you this tutorial will be worthwhile. Um, actually, this tutorial is actually uh, due to some of, to some of the questions um, that some posted in the comment session section regarding um, how to add certain functions to buttons that are added dynamically, um, such as like uh, maybe adding the, the the buttons dynamically and then also enabling those buttons to do other things like change labels and also to be able to receive uh, to remove themselves. So I try to add a lot of things uh, in this tutorial uh, so that um, it can really be able to assist you with whatever project that you have. Uh, so if there is still anything you'd like me to add or do, please do let me know. Um, yes. And also, actually, the reason why it took so long to make this tutorial uh, is because I'm actually working on a very uh, cool app. Uh, so this app will be a, a key resource app uh, where you're going to be able to uh, to see uh, these these type of like um, examples of, of how to like use certain widgets. And also some questions that you have will be on the app as well. So it's going to be more like a, a guide, a Kiwi guide app uh, that's going to help everyone. Uh, yes, yeah, so very, very soon uh, it will be on Play Store and I'll share it with everyone. Yes, yeah, so please look uh, forward to that. Anyway, uh, enough with that. Yes, yeah, so in this tutorial, things will be a bit different this time around. Um, so just to show everyone what we have here. So we have the complete code. Let me just run it and explain what we will see. Okay. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, as you can see here, what you see, there's an add button. Uh, where you add button and of course please like sus subscribe as well um yes so that i can also uh, publish more videos so the add buttons what it does is it adds buttons of course uh but it's not just a button here because i know that sometimes we want to add maybe something more fancy like a custom widget so even though i say add buttons but i created a, a custom widget um, so if you add, as you can see, it adds this widget, which consists of a label, uh, and this button with this update function attached to it. Uh, and then the, the button here, uh, to remove itself. Okay. So when you press this update function, what happens is that it changes the label to bye-bye. <laughs> Actually, this is also due to some, what somebody said in the comment. Uh, yes. Okay. And then here you can remove the button. So you can add as many buttons as you want and you can each button, as you can see, uh, you, you can still apply the, the same function and you can also still remove the button as well. Yes. If you also notice this tutorial is a bit more advanced from the tutorial that I just posted earlier, because with the buttons um, uh, that I added in the previous tutorial, uh, only the last button is removed. But in this case, you can actually select which button um, you want to remove anyway the question now is how do you do that okay so i'm going to explain to everyone yes so of course the first thing i have to do is of course is come up with the layout so the layout is a very very simple one so we have the uh, it consists of a combination of the box layout as you can see it's a box layout um yes with just basically a button which is the add buttons and then it has the text Please like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> um, yes, okay. Yes, so there's a button, then there's a label. So when you press this button, right, what does it do? Uh, it adds, okay, I don't know why I said text input here. So what does it do? It adds, uh, let's just say adds widgets. Okay, so we also need to update it here. Add widget. Okay. Yes. So. Let's just say custom widget. Okay. Um, custom widget. Okay. All right. So when you press the add buttons button at the top what does it do it adds it adds the custom widget that i have created so what is this custom widget so in order for you to create this custom widget this is very very important 
um, so you you create it using a class the class so you create a class right um, and then your widget it, uh, your custom widget it can be any name whatever you want right in, the, in this case it's a box layout so for you it can be anything else if you want it to be a button or anything it's up to you but in my case it's a box layout and what is in this box layout as you can see there is a label right and the text of the label is hello uh, and the button as you can see the text of the button is just update and when you press on that button it calls a function which is update label function yes so as you can see here's the function update label right so how does it update the label of course in order for us to update the label we use an ids right so which means we give the label an id in this case it's label one okay so self self in this case being the custom widget ids right because we want to change the label one so there we go label one what about label one the text to what we want to change the text to we want to change the text to bye bye okay yeah, so which means now when we press this button it will update yes and this is what we were seeing in the app right because when you press here it updates okay it updates yes okay all right but now the question is these are two different classes right so how are they linked how are they linked like this so in order to link them right um, so basically what I did is I added uh, this custom widget into the start class. And how did I do that? So in the start class, right, which is what we are viewing on the screen, I added a function there which is which adds the widget. Okay. So of course the widget is a class which is a box layout. So we gave it a name right custom widget okay and then we added it using add widget but remember when you add widgets you have to indicate where are you adding them so what i did is i created a grid layout here as you can see it's a grid layout just one columns right and the size and all of that and i gave the grid layout of course an ids so that we can be able to reference it Okay, so where are we adding the widget, the custom widget, we're adding it at the container, right here. Yes. What are we adding there? We're adding the custom widget. We're adding the custom widget, which is this one here. Okay. Yes. Mm. And keep in mind that when you add the custom widget like this, right, all the functions that are within that custom widget they still work okay this is the beauty of using this method so which means you can put as many functions as you want on this custom widget it doesn't matter what it is you can put as many of them uh, and then you can still be able to uh, access uh, those functions when the widget is added here and also just something to also note um so if you are working with more complex like many various classes and things like that so that's where now you will start involving uh like your properties your string property numeric property and your object property uh yes yeah, so yeah so that's that's pretty much it that's pretty much it uh yes yeah, so once again if there is any questions uh please do let me know uh, and i will definitely um update you so we can see we can see this once again okay uh, sorry, let me just save here. Uh, okay. Let me just save there. Okay, let's go on and run. Okay, so once again, as you can see, we add the buttons, right? Update, updates. Okay. Updates, updates. No, remove, remove. Update, remove 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 and that is it that is it uh thank you so much for watching this video um see you guys next time